Imagine a creature so formidable, it once stalked the great bison and giant sloths of the Ice Age. A beast so legendary, its very name conjures visions of savage power and unyielding tenacity. Meet the dire wolf, an apex predator of prehistoric North America that lived alongside saber-toothed cats and mammoths. With jaws built to crush bone and a pack mentality to rival modern wolves, these kings of the ancient wild ruled Pleistocene plains and forests. Well, you don't have to use your imagination anymore because pioneers in the science of de-extinction, an American company has announced the births of three pups whose genes resemble those of a species that hasn't roamed Earth for millennia, but have dire wolves, which went extinct more than 10,000 years ago, really been brought back to life? Before we start our story, smash the like button, make sure to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you won't miss any new stories. A researcher holds two snow white wolf pups as they howl at the top of their adorable little lungs. Their names are Romulus and Remus, in honor of the siblings associated with the mythical founding of ancient Rome. But they're not any kind of wolf you've ever seen. They're dire wolves made popular as the giant pets owned by the Stark children in Game of Thrones. The canine species went extinct more than 10,000 years ago. On Monday, the biotechnology startup Colossal Biosciences, known as the De-Extinction Company, announced the birth of Romulus, Remus, and a third dire wolf, a female named Khaleesi, in reference to the Game of Thrones character Daenerys Targaryen. According to the firm's statement, the dire wolf has just become the world's first successfully de-extincted animal. Given the pups' genetic similarity to gray wolves, however, some scientists are challenging this claim. During the Pleistocene epoch, often referred to as the Ice Age, massive herds of bison, elk, and other megafauna roamed an unforgiving landscape shaped by glaciers and extreme temperature swings. The dire wolf, scientifically known as Enochian Deerus, thrived in this environment for hundreds of thousands of years. Slightly larger than the gray wolves we know today, dire wolves boasted more robust builds and powerful jaws capable of crushing bone. They lived in packs, much like modern wolves, coordinating hunts to take down prey that outweighed them several times over. Fossil evidence, including entire skeletons excavated from sites like the La Brea Tar Pits in California, shows us that dire wolves were social creatures. They likely used teamwork to ensure the survival of their group, sharing kills, and caring for injured pack members. Over time, climate shifts and changes in prey availability began to challenge dire wolves. As large herbivores went extinct or migrated, dire wolves faced growing competition from smaller, more adaptable canids like coyotes and gray wolves. Their sturdy build, once perfect for grappling with giant game, may have become a disadvantage in a rapidly changing world, one that favored lighter, faster hunters. Since it formed in 2021, Colossal Biosciences has been known for its highly publicized efforts to resurrect extinct woolly mammoths, dodos, and Tasmanian tigers but their work with dire wolves had not previously been announced. The company plans to bring back these species by editing the genomes of their living relatives, creating a creature that closely approximates their target. To birth Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi, researchers at Colossal extracted, sequenced, and analyzed the dire wolf genome from a 13,000-year-old dire wolf tooth and a 72,000-year-old dire wolf skull. Getting the genome was really hard, they didn't live in cold climates, so the DNA wasn't as well preserved. They then compared it to the genome of a gray wolf, among other living canids. The comparison revealed 20 differences in 14 genes linked to distinct dire wolf traits, including a larger size, wider head, bigger teeth, and white fur. The researchers edited gray wolf genes to match those characteristics then inserted them into the egg cells of a domesticated dog with the cell's own DNA removed. The eggs developed into embryos, which were then transplanted into the wombs of large hound mixes, resulting in the births of Romulus and Remus in October and Khaleesi in January, all via cesarean section. 
Another female dire wolf was born in January, but she died 10 days later from an intestinal infection that Colossal says was not related to the genetic edits. Now, the modern-day dire wolves reside in a fenced-in ecological preserve certified by the American Humane Society in an undisclosed area of the northern United States. They are essentially living the Ritz-Carlton lifestyle of a wolf. Thanks to cameras and drones, they can't get a splinter without us knowing about it. Dire wolf DNA is 99.5% identical to that of gray wolves, Shapiro tells new scientist Michael LePage, but that 0.5% difference could consist of millions of base pairs. This raises the question of whether the pups are really dire wolves or just genetically modified gray wolves. Scientists not connected to the initiative point out that dire wolves might have countless other genetic differences that were not accounted for in the 20 changes made by Colossal's team. We have a mostly gray wolf that looks like a dire wolf. Julie Meachin, a vertebrate paleontologist from Des Moines University who was not involved in the project, says to ABC News, Meachin co-authored a paper on the evolution of dire wolves along with Shapiro in 2021, which found that the species is genetically distinct from gray wolves, having diverged from the wolf lineage nearly 6 million years ago. As for these new creatures, Meachin adds, I don't think they are actually dire wolves. Shapiro said that if we can look at this animal and see what it's doing, and it looks like a dire wolf and acts like a dire wolf, I'm going to call it a dire wolf. And my colleagues who are taxonomists will disagree with me. Other scientists point out that the pups might not know how to act like dire wolves. Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi are unlikely to exhibit behaviors typical of wild dire wolves due to being raised in captivity without a pack structure, says Adam Boyko to the New York Times. He adds that since the dire wolves are not consuming the ancient dire wolf diet, they are also not developing their ancestors' intestinal microbes. Nevertheless, if we are successful in de-extinction, we're building technologies that can help human health care and conservation, as he tells Bloomberg. In this spirit, Colossal also birthed two litters of cloned red wolves, the most endangered wolf species in the world. Just last month, the company announced the birth of woolly mice, which they say is a critical step in the de-extinction of woolly mammoths. They also claim to have built the most complete ancient genome to date, belonging to the Tasmanian tiger. But some have raised questions about what the conservation purpose of these dire wolves will be, or how de-extinct species could be released into the wild ecosystems of today. In states like Montana, we are currently having trouble keeping a healthy population of gray wolves on the land in the face of amped up political opposition, Christopher Preston, an environmental philosopher at the University of Montana, tells CNN. It is hard to imagine dire wolves ever being released and taking up an ecological role. So I think it is important to ask what role the new animals will serve. 